Welcome back to the Jordy Colada Show, live on this Wednesday morning. Good stuff from the chef, as always. Wrapping it up here, getting to 9 a.m., talking some LSU football with our guy. Loaded up with Bengals swag. Wouldn't expect anything less. Oh, wore the Honey Badger shirt last, last time. Yes, he did. No, he's yes, showing he out on the, on the, on the yes, platform. He's taking the, advantage of our platform. This some is, this is some new Hirachis on his feet. Those are old. Uh, are they old? These are super old. These have wow, been washed. Bro. These used to actually be really purple. Yeah, I was about to say, this dude looked like a fresh clean. Um, No, this is it. Lloyd, this is it. This is the end of the t-shirt. So oh, it's it? Damn. I was gonna, I gonna imagine you have like a, that's the an kind of, arsenal, you know? That's the kind of king levels. It's yeah. Honey Badger and Burrow. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 cool. yeah. That's right. Drop it on the table. You know Clyde Edwards? No, I probably should have a Clyde one. Uh, Who would be the and third? And then we get a Jamar. Jamar. Who would be the third? Or Jets. Ooh. Jets. Um, give me that 18 Jets. purple and gold. Yeah, give me the 18 Jets. Oh, dude, soon. Pat P, yeah. 7 in purple and gold. Ooh. Which, by the way, he looked so good in it I yesterday. Know, it's natural, dude. He did Just what he natural. should be in. I mean, I was almost expecting the baby face to be popped out of the white 7 jersey. I mean, it looked like it was an LSU old clip. You gotta get the old helmet back, too. It was it was phenomenal. Uh, how are you, brother? Good to see you. Good, how are you? Yeah, great to see you the other night at the spot. Drinking those seventeen dollar margaritas, how'd you feel? Oh, that's day? right. Whew. Oh, dude, you didn't even remember. No. That's exactly how right. You do. I mean, no. that's what happens at Superior. <laughs> was I there? I mean, one and a half later, you're naked. Don't remember you're where you are. Outside, that's right? I saw, I saw you. And broke. Yeah. <laughs> um, you got to get there before six thirty. That's the okay. Key. That's the key. Well, happy hour. That's the key. Uh, we were talking about instant impact guys for the LSU football roster earlier this week because all of them moved in over the weekend, which I know is a a big deal in, as far as just the timeline and covering the team. It kind of starts the offseason uh, and, and workouts. I, I think Jack Besh and Sage Ryan were the two guys that I had on, on each side of the ball that make, like, instant. Mason Smith is is a guy that, that we talked about as well. But um, outside of the – I mean, it, how do you feel about those selections? And, and, and instant impact uh, players from uh, new guys, who are they in your in your assessment? I like Besh. I think that anyone in that wide receiver room, because, yeah. I mean, you've, mm-hmm. over two years, you've turned over your top, like, six pass, you know, right. catchers. Even just Sullivan, McMath, and those guys. I mean, so. you expect any red shirts in that room? No. Yeah. And I think the red shirt thing is kind yeah. of played out at this point. You know? Because they can leave. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, right. So, I think that everyone, just because of how turned over it is, you've got Butte, but then who? I mean, Dre Jenkins, Kirkland, they're older guys, more Coy, and then we're back from last year, but... When you've signed five guys and all of them are that good, uh, I think they'll play a lot. Besh is interesting because I do think they don't have much depth at tight end. I mean, they've got Cole Taylor, and then they just brought in Jalen Sheed. We'll see what happens with Gilbert, obviously. But point being, you could use a guy like Besh there, so, you know, certainly in passing situations. I like Chris Hilton a lot. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's not many guys who have athletic bloodlines, State champ in football, state champ in track multiple times in tons of events, including the 400, which is straight. I was talking to his dad about that. It's just a grown man's race. And his dad won it back in the day, yeah. a state title. So I like Chris Hilton a lot. Brian Thomas has got really good size. Brian Thomas's junior year was better than any of these guys. So if he can harness that again, that'd be big. Malik Neighbors is one to watch. Yeah. I mean, he didn't play his senior that. year. Yeah. He sat out, but he was awesome at Como before that and was really good in seven on seven. Just a raw athlete. I think he could be really good for him. It's uh, Deion Smith. I mean, yeah. Deion Smith was there. I think all, this wide receiver room has a chance because of a need for a lot of them to play. But, I mean, if we're including also guys who are Mike Jones is in this class, Ooh. I think he'll play a good bit at linebacker. I think they need safeties. So Sage could be one of those guys for sure. They've just signed Major Burns. Mason Smith obviously is up there. It's a this is a good class. It was funny though being out there watching them move in. Um, a handful of the coaches and um, analysts and guys like that, recruiting guys, were out there. And you have to remember they haven't been face to face with kids in a year and a half. Yeah. Some of these kids they had never seen before. That's so. They're strange, sitting around there like, man. I hope he's six three and buff. You know, like yeah. I hope he's the not six one. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, Absolutely. But I can. Hey guys, here, <laughs> Jack Besh. Nice to meet you. Gave like, you a what? scholarship, yeah, dude. Are you right, helping right. somebody move? I mean, that all, is a dangerous game, right? It's also the preferred walk-on move-in days. So I think a lot of it's like, are you the? <laughs> what a great prank! Dude, what a yeah, great prank right. that would be to pull like, yeah, hey, right. Jack Besh, walk on five ten, one fifty five. That's right. That's you. Um, I think that. I'll, I'll give you one example, though. Kimo Macaniole, who they flipped from Florida nice. State, he's one of their only offensive linemen beyond Dellinger enrolled early. They'd never seen him in person, and that's a key position that you better actually look what you know, we think you do, and you can do all these Zoom calls and 
you know, have coaches measure them on video and send it to you and all that, but until you see it, you don't feel great. And he walked in legit 6'4 plus 300, and I think you could hear everyone's, <laughs> all right. Yeah, right. What's yeah. up, Big Daddy? Great to meet you, Big Fella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fridge? Let me grab that. Let me grab that fridge, Big Daddy. Yeah, I got yeah. you. I got that bag, man. Oh, man. Um, but Literally. It, yeah, right. It was uh, – it was good. I think that they were pretty impressed. Savion Jones looked good. Yeah. Um, the basketball kids were moving in, so you've got Epton yeah. Reed and all those different kids in town. I know Billy had said Adam Miller was coming through or just moved in. So, good weekend, right? Yeah, uh, it was. You bring a bunch of football kids, basketball kids in, flipping the roster a bit. Um, but immediate impact. Uh, the wide receivers, and you can just pick them because I think they're going to have to play. A lot of people's go-to after that is running back. And when you talk about Corey Kiner, you talk about Goodwin coming in, both mm-hmm. of those guys come in with some sense of um, impact ability. But how, I guess I would ask you first, how do you feel about the room as it sits currently or as it did a week ago? I like those guys. I mean, I'm still waiting on Emory, right? Like everybody yeah. is like, okay, you were the five-star. Are you breaking it? You know, you've had two years. Uh, it, does it click for you? And now they've got a new offense and – We'll see how he adjusts to that. I'm a big TDP fan. Mm-hmm. I thought he looked great in the spring game. It looked he, like he lost yeah. weight. It looked like looks motivated. Yeah, had another gear to him. Mm-hmm. He had some money here. Yeah. So those guys who are juniors, he and Emery, um, I like them a lot. I think Kiner may take a little more time. He's making a huge jump from class, you know, high school ball and the classification he was into this. Goodwin though could be interesting. I mean, he could give you some. He could give you some touches this year. I think. Um, if if we don't see Emory turn that corner, if we see TDP get banged up or Emory get banged up, um, we didn't really get to see any of Emory this spring. But I like those two guys first. I would imagine that's where Pete's is putting most of his focus, and then you can bring the other guys along as they come. But I do like Goodwin. How good is the defensive line? How What's the ceiling of this unit? I mean, you talked about adding a guy like Savion Jones who – I mean, he could be like a, you know, just a specific down-type player and a very skilled guy – if they expect on playing him this year. But, I mean, how deep and how, how good could they be? Yeah, I think, well, obviously O puts so much emphasis into the D-line that they're deep. I mean, they've got a ton of guys. I like the interior a lot more right now. I think they're a lot deeper on the interior. I mean, you could go, I can make an easy case that five different guys could be the starters. Hmm. I mean, Glenn Logan and Neil Farrell have been here. They've got, mm-hmm. Glenn Logan's got 30-plus starts. I mean, Neil Farrell's into the 20s, so that's two. O loves Joe Evans, so he's clearly in that mix. He started the spring game. And then you've got Jaquelin and Mason Smith. So, I mean, that right there gives you five guys, and you're not even into the Gillerys and Eric Taylor. That's, what it takes. That's how you win championships. Sure. Right That's going to be a yeah. problem. Endless rotation. Then I sit at D end, and I say, okay, beyond Anthony and Gay and then Ojolari, who's really ready? And we'll see if what Sony Fanua can do. But then you're getting into this group of Philip Webb and Desmond Little and all these guys that, you know, have been in the program a year. They're still probably getting acclimated. They haven't played much. Um, but then, like you said, Savion Jones is coming in. You've got some other guys uh, that you feel good about. But if I'm looking at recruiting, I'm moving forward heavy on D end because I think it'll be important. And obviously, Gay and Anthony are in there last year. But I love the DT spot. I mean, they could just rotate kids all day there. Is Little ready to play? I don't think. Yeah. I mean, he was. I mean, he was like a basketball guy coming yeah. in. So you know, it takes a little Very slim and tall. So I mean, it's going to take a while to put. A lot of weight on a six five guy, um, so maybe I think Philip Webb is someone you probably are curious to see. A bit of a tweener was he a linebacker, outside linebacker, a D end? Uh, he played D end in the spring game. I'll be interested to see if he can't give him something. And they seem to like Sony Fanua, so yeah. if he can give him anything as a backup, uh, I think that'll be uh, that'll be good. But mm-hmm. keeping Anthony and Gay and Ojolari healthy will be key. What did it mean getting Baskerville back? I think it's big, right? And now you look at that position, you've got him and Clark, you've got Mike Jones, you've got Bug Strong. Um, they were playing Jared Small some in the spring game. Obviously, he's going to be on special teams, but you can play him if you're in a pinch. We saw a little bit of Josh White. Um, I like that room a good bit right now. I think Blake Baker's probably a really good coach, too. Mm-hmm. I think he can bring them along and uh, get them motivated, get them in the right spot. They seem to all like Durante Jones. Overall, if the defense is just put in the right place, which they weren't last year, they've got the players. I mean, you can... You can field a top four or five defense in the SEC easily with just the roster. So as long as these guys get acclimated to what Jones wants, I think they'll be good. I'm really curious to see how good Mike Jones is because, you know, he left Clemson to find more playing time, but it seems like they'd be able to give it to him here. I mean, they've lost Jabril Cox, and I don't know. 
Yeah. I'm interested to see. He's I don't know a ton about him, but I see him popping up on Mel Kuyper's first round. You know, wow. I haven't even don't you know? I think it was McShay or Kuyper had him as a first round pick. Wow. For a guy who transferred out looking for more playing time. Damn. So I'm I'm curious. Um, would you make the news? But I like basketball. Would you make the news of T.J. Finley landing in Auburn? I mean, I if I'm Finley, I, I don't know. It depends. But if I'm grading out, if his goal was to stay at sort of the top level of football, I think he probably upgraded his status in a big way. I mean, if we're presuming he was third on this depth chart and one of the guys he was tied with was his age, and Max Johnson, then you're going to stay in conference, going to a team with a whole new coaching staff, so they've kind of got a slate wiped clean, even for Bo Nix, but for everybody, maybe getting a fresh shot. Uh, Nix hasn't lit the world on fire, and he's older than TJ, so I would think that right out of the gate, TJ's the second-string quarterback, and he's play away or a bad game away or whatever it is from playing. So I'm Finley. I would consider that. I'm like, okay, I'm leaving LSU, but I want to stay in the SEC. It's about as good of a landing spot as you can be. And if you're trying to balance, am I going to play versus yeah. am I on a good team? Um, LSU added Jacoby Matthews since the last time we spoke. Another five-star to this class. And there seems to be still so many players out there. How does this class of 22, which is loaded – as far as commitments go, what's the area of emphasis that they finish on, or, or where do the needs? You mentioned defensive line. Yeah, defensive they only end. have one D line committed, Taiji Hill, so that'll be big. And I think by design, they've probably waited now, knowing that summer camp's going to happen, and you can finally put your eyes on guys. So they'll bring a ton of guys in to work out uh, over the month of June. So we'll learn more on that then. O line is always big. I mean, you've got to figure out a way to continue to build there, and they've done well with. Uh, Will Campbell and Bo Borderline, Lucas Taylor out of Alabama. Um, they've got some alignment coming in this summer. You've got to get Emory Jones. Yeah. I mean, at Catholic, he's a no doubt. What's the holdup on that? I think he's probably just wanted to take his time, see what all's out, you know, make a few visits, whatever it might be. So many of these kids have just said, I haven't done, yeah. you know, it's been shut down since I was in 10th grade. I want to go do something before I start my senior year and commit somewhere. So I think he's going to go to LSU, but maybe this summer he pops. I don't think he pops before camp, like in the next week or something. You mentioned Baker being on staff, the new linebackers coach for uh, for LSU, and it seems like they are now starting to touch into South Florida as a recruiting area. I saw where uh, Shamar Stewart has yep. a, a visit playing the five-star defensive tackle out of South Florida. Is is that an area that you anticipate LSU picking up some more steam? I mean, I think that they're certainly going to try. Florida's got a nice class. Uh, the state of Florida has a good class this year, but it's always going to be Louisiana, East Texas, you know, Mississippi, Georgia, and then if you can dip into Florida, then, you know, then great. And, uh -huh. But between, think about it, I mean, Corey Gravy Raymond. at this point. Corey Raymond's always been that guy, and he can go down there and get him DBs or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Um, but, oh, look, has spent time at Miami. He's got recruiting ties all over. But you've hired Durante Jones, who has some ties to the state. Andre Carter, your D-line coach, was coaching for the Dolphins before he came here. Um, Blake Baker was on Miami staff. I mean, Shamar Stewart, you mentioned, the number one D-lineman in the country. His first offer was Miami, I believe, and Blake Baker was in the room when it happened. So they've got ties down there that I'm sure they want to try to tap into this cycle because probably now half the staff um, you know, has either coached there or at least knows all the high school coaches down there. We would say our biggest concern around that we've been talking about just in general has been the LSU's offensive line. And I don't know if you know this or not, but I was just wondering what your thoughts are on where Cardell Thomas is. I mean, I, he was running, yeah, running third – team uh, in the spring, and I think he's coming back from... Is the injury worse than we thought it was? I mean, it was like a clean break, wasn't it? I, I think it was like a compound <laughs> fracture of some sort of, you know, it was a bad break. So for him to even just be still out there and, and grinding is good for him, no doubt. I think coming out of high school, he he was going to be one of those linemen that took a little bit of time to get a little bit stronger in the lower half, lose a little bit of weight up top, um, you know, just get adjusted to the college game. Uh, and because of that, They've had these veterans now. What they've got every starting lineman yeah. coming back, and they've taken transfers. So I would put him behind Anthony Bradford at right guard as the third guy. But then Chasen Hines would be your other right guard. I don't know if Bradford or Hines. I bet is starting, and then Thomas would be the guy behind that. What about those offensive linemen last year? Martinez, Xander yeah, right. Hill, well, Doomerville. Doomerville. I mean, I had heard the most about Doomerville. Obviously, was a big time left tackle. They seemed to love last year, like. In the off season and moving into the season, Xavier Hill, they thought that he could play. At first, when they signed him, it's like, okay, this is a guard. And then they put him at left tackle. He was playing behind Cam Wire as the third-string guy. 
um, and that was intriguing. But then Martinez was the one who played. Yeah, I mean, he was on special teams. He was on the field goal units. He stepped into, I think, one game when Hines was out. He went in there, and then they moved some guys around. Maybe Wire moved over. Um, but they seemed like Martinez a lot, at least if we're going off of who they were playing right out of the gate. So the goal there is you just don't want them all to transfer, right? You want them to stick around. One day, Doomerville is your right tackle. You'll see where Xavier Hill lines up. And, and then, obviously, with Martinez, he can play inside. So, I like him. Yeah, we just added Big Dave. So it's not a special yeah, he's going to be a walk-on, which, for him, it's like betting on yourself. That and was Pig Cage. Pig Cage, yeah, yeah sorry. Cage yeah, that had dropped, yeah. Now they have like half of Rummel's roster on their team. Which I mean, is fine, right? Uh, Evan I mean, Francioni like, was a Rummel kid yeah. who they were hyping up all uh, offseason yeah, at wide receiver. Keep the pies on, huh? Um, but yeah, to, to get another Rummel kid. But Pig Cage was really good in high school. Um, he's undersized a bit. He ended up at Nichols. But then he becomes an FCS All-American in year one. And he says, look, I'm in LSU's final scholarship spot went to Major Burns. And Pig Cage said, like, I've got some other options, but I'm going to go to LSU and we'll walk on. And if you walk on that first year, after a year, you can be put on scholarship. And it doesn't count to a 25. It just counts to that 85, right. which they're always under. So, you know, there's guys on the team every year that didn't sign an initial that are on scholarship. I mean, Avery Atkins has been on scholarship every year, I think, and he didn't sign out of high school. He was just a preferred walk-on. Um, so I bet Pig Cage gets himself a, a scholarship if he sticks around a year and and – Give some safety depth to that room for sure. Update on Gilbert with school getting in? Yeah, I mean, they've got him set up to where with LSU he could take his credit, you know, hours this summer. I think it was a low number, too. It wasn't like he's going to have to carry 15 hours or something. Um, you would have to think he's playing catch-up, but I was told that, look, they've got a plan in place. Here's what it would be. Um, as long as he's on track academically, then he would be good to go you know, academic-wise for the fall. I think there's also just so many questions around him, too, that leave it kind of them wondering what's going to happen, even people in his camp kind of back and forth over what should happen. But I, he's not here right now. But that doesn't mean he'll be here this week or next week or whenever it is. So I think right now they're efforting to just figure out, okay, are you coming over to do summer school and do workouts? Are you going to do this on your own right now? Uh, what's your path? And I would have to think in the next couple of weeks he he decides and he's either here and he's working out with the team and – in classes or he's doing stuff online, whatever it might be. But um, it's almost impossible to think that he's just not going to go to school this summer because then he wouldn't play anywhere this yeah, fall. I mean, LSU has to be pressing to get him on campus, I'd no imagine. Doubt. Yeah. They are. Um, it's just an odd situation. Yeah. I mean, there's so much stuff behind the scenes, just as often there is in college football and, um, and dealing with kind of situations like this. So it's tough to even speculate what's going to happen. I could, yeah. I could tell you everything that I've heard, and you would still sit there and say, I don't You're lying. Know. Yeah, no, you know, no. It's just or crazy. just it's not it's just so crazy. Yeah. yeah, or just be like, yeah. you didn't tell, tell me, me anything. anything. Yeah, yeah. That's, I still don't have an answer. So that's kind of where things are, which is super odd spot to be in. But look, I hope the best for Gilbert. He's mm-hmm. so good. This I don't want this to be a Ronald Dupree type story where it's sort of, you know, this legend, this guy who's epic status, five star, highest ranked tight end ever, and we see him play seven college ga- eight college games, whatever it yeah. was. So. How much do you think that the the transformation of the offense makes a difference to him coming back to LSU? It had to have been a conversation because I don't think he liked really the way he was utilized in his first year. He was not the most willing blocker for well, sure. And they huh? kept doing it to him, dude. They kept shoving him in there. I don't think they had anybody else at that point. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that plays a role. Pete's getting involved. I think at this point, too, and look, they only have one tight end or did one tight end on scholarship, Cole Taylor. Now they've got Jalen Sheed uh, as an enrollee this summer. But if I'm LSU and you're saying you don't want to block, okay, cool. Cole Taylor, you're blocking. Yeah, you know, right. like, yeah, absolutely. Mashburn and these walk on tight ends. Yeah. Nick Stores, you're blocking. You absolutely. Know, you know, figure it out. So I'm sure they're telling him everything that he yeah, would he like to, to you know, that you need to hear. But it all comes back to, bro, you know, a lot of things need to be aligned. Back on the straight and narrow yeah. before, you know, this, this works out for everybody. What does the uh, summer months look like over at uh, 247? Because I know recruiting doesn't stop. Yeah, well, June's going to be really big, obviously. So June 1st, everything opens up. LSU's doing camps next weekend right out of the gate. Uh, O-line, D-line camp, a skills camp, a kicking camp. And then that'll bleed into the middle of, mu- middle of the month. We'll, they'll do like that 7-on-7 seven seven tournament, which will have pretty much all the schools around the state. Uh, then they'll do the big elite camp. Um, so we'll be covering that. Kids going on other visits. That'll be the month of June. July, it goes dead again, but only for a few weeks. In the end of July, 
opens back up and they're allowing people to have camps. LSU's not doing it, but um, there are some teams that are having camps at the end of July. So then August, it'll be, <clears throat> excuse me, sort of floodgates back open again. Kids are coming in on visits. Kids are being at games, all of that. So we're June 1st back to normal and recruiting, which will be fun. Great to see you, bro. I know. Good to see you. Shane the, Dixon. The birds are chirping. Yes, the birds are yeah. chirping, dude. They really, woke up on the, they really woke up on the Gilbert question. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody there's whoa, birds, though. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. You think they just flew in from Marietta? Like, <laughs> yeah. me, it's not <laughs> what we're hearing. Yeah. Pass not catching only tight end. <laughs> yeah, see it. Fly them back. There you go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sit it back. Uh, uh, They'll be back a, in two months, hopefully, at the time of the season. With books on their feet. Have a. Have you watched the the Skip documentary? No, not yet. I meant to watch it. Um well, Monday night was superior, so I didn't watch yes, that. Yes, that's right. You may have, and you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw the way you were trending. You didn't you, pull you didn't road, not holding the road. Sure. Yeah. Then, yeah, right. And then Tuesday night, I uh, I meant to, but then I ended up watching just like a bunch of Bravo reality television. It's really? Sad. Yeah. What are you watching? Uh, Last night, my lady's got me watching under the uh, under the deck. Yeah, below deck. Below deck. You were so close. Under the below deck. Deck. You were so <laughs> close, <laughs> man. Below the Shaw's the sunset. Uh, I had to catch up. So like that stuff that that was on Sunday night. I can't knock out Mondays before I, I get through that. So mm-hmm. below deck is a great one. It is a good show. I huh? hate to admit it, but it is great. Just write trash. Just write it. Yeah, just, just like just mind numbingly nothing. Of just trash. Yeah, garbage. But that. I can't put down you appointment can't. television. I mean, yeah. Just see my trash. Forget that Skip Bertman documentary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> below I'm deck. Catch up on below deck. Jordy's searching on the cable guide under the deck. Like, where's <laughs> where's <laughs> my show? Yeah, it's not here. <laughs> the, uh, Dude, Kelly, did you delete <laughs> under the deck? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, my go-to is Guy Fieri, and he just got eighty he got million paid. dollars. He got million. UB money. Wow. Three years. What a three-year deal. <laughs> three years. I mean, that, For is, just that is quarterback Asian money. Better enough. Yes. That's, that's Kirk Cousins money, man. Guaranteed. You like that? <laughs> Could you see them trying to lock him down on some like five or six-year deal? And he's like, <laughs> Are you kidding I'm me? A free bro? Three year, bro. <laughs> right. You know who you're talking to? It's Guy what, Fieri. what are we talking? Eighty? Yeah. That's three. Yeah, that's, Minimum. Yeah, that's Gaffieri talk. I'm talking Gaffieri. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Shay, later, buddy. All right, boys. Girl. Uh, on, uh, on Twitter, go247. Go Chevrolet drives us every day. We're back with you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Have a great Wednesday. Skip Burtman at some point today, an afternoon Ooh. Jay session. Oh, nice. Uh, with the skipper. Slow burn. Yes. Me and Lloyd's gambling picks. It's yeah. Absolutely. Gambling picks where uh, old Jack. 2-0, 1-1. Ain't nobody following you, Lizzie. No, no, I know just that. I told, him, I told him fade me. He's paying the juice. Yep. Uh, 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. We'll talk to you.